Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and today I'm going to be reviewing Purity by Jonathan Franzen. But wait, stop, stop, stop. Stop writing your comments down below asking me how this book compares to Franzen's two famous books, Freedom and The Corrections. I know that those books are important and I know that I've reviewed both of them on this channel already. And I know that the conversations about this book cannot take place in a vacuum. But, just as I cannot expect that you've already watched my two videos, Franzen couldn't expect that his readers had already read those two books. Each book deserves its own day in the sun, so we're gonna do that before playing the comparison game. Capiche? Hold on to your dust jackets. I don't know. Disclaimer. Disclaimer, as always, no spoilers. Okay, we're gonna come at this thing in three sections, because if you know my channel at all, you know that I love three-part book reviews. The basics about the book, my personal experiences with it, and then, finally, what Purity does in relation to those other two books that Franzen is known for. Okay, so the basics. Purity is a 563-page novel released in September of 2015, so... Just about four or five months ago. It tells the story of, you guessed it, a family, because why would friends and stop doing the thing that he's best at? The main character, Pip Tyler, or Purity Tyler, well, she's basically me. Kind of. She's a 20-something year old who just graduated from college with student loan debt, and she lives in Oakland, which is an hour... that way. Yeah, that way. That's where the similarities stop, though. Pip's mother won't tell her who her father is, and that secret, and secrets in general, are incredibly important to the novel. So we've got Pip Tyler. Enter onto the scene The Sunlight Project, which is an international organization that exposes secrets, and their poster boy, Andreas Wolf. The novel spends long sections in the perspectives of the main players, and it also crosses three continents. There's America, obviously, but then there's also Germany, and Bolivia and South America. Purity also moves forwards and backwards in time so that you get all of the wonderful complexity that is a family relationship or a marriage under the stress of time. And then in true friends and fashion, there's politics, of course. There's feminism, environmentalism, uh, some class politics, even references to current events like WikiLeaks. But also, and I swear this is not a spoiler because it's included on the dust jacket, there's a murder. To my personal experiences with the book. Okay, you see that thing that I just did there? Where I said, just like the book jacket does, that there's a murder in this book? That's important. I wanted pretty badly, and there's no understating the importance of this, I wanted very badly to know what happened. More about that idea later. Okay, so I'll be blunt with you, that's what this YouTube thing is about. I really enjoyed Purity but I enjoyed it a lot more once I got through the first hundred pages. I mean, after that I was hooked, but the book's one big fault is that it starts a little slowly. Okay, but there's also something going on with the sentences here that it took me a while to notice. The sentences are trimmed down. They're... They're just not special. I don't know how else to say it. They're not special. But possibly on purpose, which is the mind-blowing part of this. Purity does not do that thing which so much literary fiction does, where the author, every 60 pages or so, drops a beautiful, universal human truth. One of those sentences where you're reading it and you're like, I don't exactly know what this means, but I know that it is supposed to be important. And I think that's on purpose because Lord knows Franzen has the chops to write those kind of sentences. It's like Franzen gets out of the way of the story and the characters, and I don't have to sit there like I do with a lot of other books these days, or hell, Franzen's other two books, and say, wow, this author sure is smart. I also feel obliged to say that this book made me feel less like a piece of human crap than the last two did. So, I don't know what to make of that. Okay, number three, the comparison game. First and foremost, Franzen is really starting to set a pattern with what he does with books' titles. I covered this in my review of the corrections already, but basically, Franzen chooses one word or a phrase, like purity or the corrections or freedom, and he makes that word reappear every 80 or 100 pages. Every time it pops up, it's with a new angle on that idea or a new character's perspective. And so, your picture of that idea will shift just a little bit. In that way, purity is no different than the other two books. The critical response has been interesting, at the very least because it's fun to see how many sentences there are before the corrections is mentioned. Very few, to be clear. But that's just the problem, in my opinion. 
this book is trying to do something different than what the corrections did. I've spent some time thinking about this, and I even conferred with a friend who's also read the three big Franzen books. The difference with purity is that to some degree, Franzen has flipped the middle finger to the critics and to the literary genre of fiction. It's not a super bold, super bold. <laughs> it's not a very bold move because a lot of people are doing it these days, but it's still significant. And he's done that in two ways. First, with the sentence level thing I was talking about earlier. He's less concerned with writing universal truths and more concerned with doing what he can for the story and the characters. And second, he has kind of written a whodunit novel. The literary genre usually hates on that kind of thing because it seems like something that belongs in a James Patterson book. But Franzen, at least in this book, seems unafraid to borrow the things that genre fiction does right. He said it a hundred times. He is in the entertainment business. The sustained business of entertaining you over 560 pages. The corrections in Freedom seem more squarely aimed at the literary fiction crowd, and please, for the love... for the love of Ryan? For the love of Ryan, please, for the love of Ryan, do not ask me which of these books is my favorite, because it's down to the corrections and this one, and I don't know. I don't know. The two novels are trying to do two different things, and they've got their feet in different camps, and so I... I just don't know. It's a beautiful problem to have, though. Okay, so the thesis of my review. Purity is not your father's Franzen novel. It's thrilling and captivating, but it's also still Franzen, so you're not gonna read family relationships or marriages quite like these anywhere else. Purity is less stylish and sleek, but it's no less stunning for its simplicity. And finally, it's possible that it will strike Franzen fans in a weird way, because it's not the same as the last two books. But to me, personally, it was new in the best kind of way. And that's all that I've got for this week. Wow, can I just say what a pleasure it is to have finally checked that book off the list? Also, as of the time I'm filming this, there is exactly one review of Purity up on YouTube, so we'll see how the book does over time. But anyways, I will see all you next week. Best wishes! Kurt Vonnegut once said about writing, write to please just one person. If you open a window and make love to the world, so to speak, your story will get pneumonia. My brain crisis thingy has kind of been about that quote and about making things as gifts for people, both in writing and in YouTube. I'm thinking next on the review docket is either Between the World and Me, the ta Coates book, or my brilliant friend, the Elena Ferrante book. Thoughts? Anybody? Preferences?